Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And as you can see, we're going to be talking about now. Honey, baby, I don't know. I just don't know, but I know it will work itself out. Child. <sighs> Mama Joyce at it again. And some of it I can't really blame her for, because she's trying to look out for Riley's um, benefit, as well as her two other children she has with Todd, as well as paper in some form or shape some form shape or fashion okay we got this where well, we're looking at it on speak on it and uh the situation also about mama joyce and um candy having a little talk about her wealth being spreaded around after she's gone uh meaning deceased and what she would like to happen and uh one of them is just ridiculous because she even said that Todd can't marry nobody. <laughs> I'm like, you can't just say that. Um, you, know, you don't put too much in this, into this man. Because anybody that had money or didn't have money, how can you, being the deceased person, dictate how your uh, uh, spouse that survived you, uh, how you going to tell them how to live their life? You didn't know. Who made you God, girl? Who made you God? Jury, executioner. Ah, girl, 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 girl. Judge, jury, and executioner. Who made you all of those things when you pass away out this world and you think God is supposed to abide by your rules and your regulations? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's not going to happen. And for you to have let that out your mouth in front of your mama. Your mama had to check you because somehow you went stupid. You got stupid. In you. She had to bring you back down to earth and let you face reality, what the reality would be like. Because I promise you, if mama shared with his thoughts, um, deceased mom would have still been around. Girl, more than likely, she would have made Todd step out on his own and go get his own stuff. Just so the bloggers and anybody else wanted to say something different. That you were living off candy. Or how Mama Joyce likes to put it. Every time she gets a chance to get to the front of the camera. She says, you made hard. You're the shit. He's not the shit. Just that and the third. Okay? To a certain degree, I can see what she's talking about. And then I have to see the bigger, bigger picture. That Mama Joyce... You can't be telling your daughter what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. You're not fucking Todd. You're not in a uh, situation where she knows about Todd or what Todd lets her know. You know what I'm saying? Because it's always something that you don't know about your spouse, but you think you know everything. No, you don't. Only the Lord knows that person inside and out. But Candy has definitely smelled the roses, the tulips, as I like to say. And she definitely believes in her man and her marriage. And that's okay. That's good, got it, and that's straight. However, when did we put Don Juan into situations? Now, I know he's your ace boom coon. Uh, you think you can trust him behind him with money, mix him with other things. Trust go out the door. Go really out the door. So, um, I was just like, hmm, she leaving Don Juan? And then, not only did you leave Don Juan, you left in trust of your mama or you're taking it very much so in consideration that your mama will have a say in how the money is divvied up okay now i understand how it's being said is that her and dawan her and don juan makes the decisions if you give her that power 
And Todd has no <laughs> legitimate right to anything. <laughs> and when he heard that, on uh, speak on it, when um he came to, I guess he was brought Ken off at the um place that they do speak on it. I guess at one of her buildings or something that she's leasing or owns, who knows. But anyway, um, they were trying to tell him, and A1 was trying to tell him what this deal was about when it came to um, when it came to Candace's demise and who's going to have what and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I see where this is going. So he didn't like some of that. So they had to call Don Juan back. And hopefully he was, I guess he was still in the building uh, when A1 had called him. And he had to come back and explain his, himself to what was really being said, which was really what was going on and all that. And we see that Mama Joyce wants to have a say. He didn't like that. He really don't like the fact that Candy put Don Juan over the uh, trust. The joint trust. But he like, okay. It is what it is. Okay. And my thing was, why you just didn't put a lawyer over it, period. And once you and the lawyer work things out, because you know you're going to have to give him a commission as well. Um, you know, um, it wouldn't be no, it would be totally non-biased. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because the, um, the lawyer don't know two tips of a sh sh rat's tail of who is what and what it is, except for what is being explained to him regarding who's going to get what far as when Candace deceased. So it was like, okay. But then Mama Head said, Mama Joyce, oh, I got scared. <laughs> I got scared. Oh, he said, oh, no. <laughs> She's like, uh, he talked like, no, we need to have a better understanding because how, if I'm still living, how is Candy going to have Don Juan plus Mama Joyce in the decision making or how I get my funds? I said, oh, 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 now, wait a minute, hold up. Didn't you say the same thing about Riley? Because Riley had that same uh, insecurity that if Candy died before Todd, she felt some kind of way too that Todd would not be generous enough to get her her stuff that she needed whenever she said she needed something to start a business, <coughs> excuse me, or do anything out there, but she needed a good down payment and she wanted to come get her money out of her trust or whatever. And, and Todd would be saying no, or what do you need it for? Or that's not a sound advice. That she, she don't want to hear all that. Because she can get from a mom, and I know, uh, Riley's a bit, I'm going to say spoiled. Because we do as parents, when we don't have that other factor that's playing a major role in their children's lives, and in Riley's case, she didn't have her dad. Uh, I can't say that her dad won't have a change of heart. As he gets older and, and, and wiser, I guess, he could come back and say, you know, Riley, I'm sorry, da 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 Riley's a grown adult. She has to process the feelings on her own or see her therapist and, you know, get the right frame of mind that she needs to be in to be able to have a decent conversation with her dad, especially when he's older, he's, you know, probably his health is failing, and he just want to clear his conscience pretty much. And then maybe Riley will be in a, a different, you know, pool in her life where she can understand where he's coming from, she can empathize and say, okay, you weren't there for me, but I'm not going to do you like you did me. You know what I'm saying? She might be softened up and she might have lived a a little bit of life and see how sometimes you got to do some things that you don't really want to do to make a certain thing uh, foster and grow and, and manifest itself. And it could be a new way or a new relationship with her dad. But with her not having it now, I could see why Mama Joyce is saying, well, Todd is still in uh, uh, Baby Blaze and Baby Ace's life. And uh, you know, I'm sure they have to do another wheel or Candy should do something while she's doing the wheel now. If something happened to Todd, this is what I want to happen for the kids. You know, in case I'm gone and nobody really knows what the hell is going on and Todd didn't put nothing in place right after I died. So, okay, this is what we're going to have. So, Candy, I'm giving you a clue. You know, because it seems like your family's going to be fucked up. They're going to be messed up. And the mom's just ain't going to be taking no shit. She's going to be running 
you're going to be giving people hell after you're gone. Okay, I'm just saying. So if you want to do it right, you need to have one for when you become deceased and Todd is still living. And then you need to have another one just in case Todd gets deceased, you know, before your kids get grown. This is what I want to happen. But, um... Uh, I, I don't know what Candace is doing these days, because even on the last episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 14, episode 17, uh, they were going around saying, you know, the players of the game, or the players of the um, the uh, reality show, that Candy did not finish setting up her estate planning, in case she, you know, in case she, you know, gets, uh, when she becomes deceased or whatnot. I'm like, Candy, 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 stop dragging your heels. Stop dragging the thoughts of you're going to get it done here and there. So it seems like, no, you were not pretty much on the same court, a court with you and Todd, trying to figure out who's going to do what. Because he really, I mean, he taught, he really wasn't keen on, uh, what's his name? Don Juan being a part of y'all decision. But how he said, y'all, it should just be between you and him. And both of y'all have to have faith, have to have faith in each other that y'all would do the right thing. Candy went so far as to say when she was talking to her mom, oh, well, I don't want Todd to get married again. <laughs> and I'm like, good luck with that, baby girl. Good luck with that. But again, you could include this in your clause because you're you know, still young, you're still in your good mind and, and, and health, and you can make these decisions. And whether he you know, want to go along with it or not, that's not your deal because y'all had a prenup. Uh, and I would love to see what that prenup is. Uh, if, you know, what would Todd be getting if the marriage was less than 10 years? And what would he be giving if the marriage lasted over 10 years? You know what I'm saying? That would be very interesting to see. But we're not to that part. And we don't know if they would even give us that information to have a thought about. But um, Todd definitely came back. Because <laughs> Don Juan, not Don Juan. But A1 was saying, well, you know, Candy pretty much was like, she didn't want you to get married uh, after she died. You can have a date, you can date, and just that is you, you can't uh, marry. She would like you not to. That was her last wish. And Todd said, that was selfish. That is selfish of her. If I was on the other end, I, I ain't going to be him. I can't tell me, I can tell you what to do with your life, your body, or whatever. And she said, no, that, that's, no, she shouldn't have said that. I said, see, and saying shit that Todd already don't agree with. Ain't nothing set in stone. She ain't got the agreement, from my understanding, at least from yep, Sundays. Because, you know, that's, well, then again, they, we, they tape it and then we see it afterwards. So, I don't know. I know when this taping was left off, she didn't have her estate planning done. Okay, it was still in limbo. So, nine times out of ten, going off her energy. Going off Todd's energy, shit ain't, shit ain't right. She ain't got nothing set in stone. She can die today, and nothing will be really processed to be done anything with. And they're going to be fighting and carrying on, cussing each other out, not speaking to each other. It's going to be a hot mess. But, um, I guess that's their mess, and they will have to deal with it accordingly. However, let me see. What was going on? I'm trying to get that um article to play for you all. How Todd kind of got indignant with his own self <laughs> when um uh, he heard that Cam didn't want him to get married no more. I was like, yeah, Todd, that's what she said, but that's what she said. She would prefer you not to take up another spouse because she didn't want. No woman coming into her house uh, using her stuff and that she got for the family. Uh-uh. She didn't want nobody in there. Period. Point blank. Um, that was funny. That was funny as hell. That really was. But let me let y'all listen to what she said. We've been trying to work on this estate planning. And we decided we got to do different trucks. That should be in a separate church. 
child that you should. That was a hot mess for Candy trying to say that uh, <laughs> she going to have Todd set up. But she ain't trying to set up no woman that he choose to fool around with. Yes, honey. Fooling around with. So he, can, he can fool around, but he can't definitely. He cannot. And I mean cannot uh, marry nobody. Todd was like, she said that. And of course, <laughs> she did. And she was serious about that thing. But she don't want nobody getting none of her money, meaning not another woman. Uh, and I'm like, what do you think is basically going to happen, dear heart? Life is going to go on without you and your children. And if Todd don't do the right thing by you, then it just is what it is, okay? Just like he would expect you to take care of his children, but you already know you would. But again, we don't know a lot about Todd. And it's not our damn business to try to figure it out. But since y'all put y'all business out here on these reality shows, we kind of do have a somewhat say or an opinion on what we see going on, all right, on the show that you're presenting on and the mess you're bringing up about your particular uh, marriage. But here's what Todd is saying about uh, he didn't he didn't get a clear understanding or this wasn't told to him about having Mama Joyce be one of the people that will uh, have a say in what he gets and what he don't get. Oh, which is crazy, I'm sure you may think. But the girls are mad at me. So you came up at the reunion. You will see it on the future episode of the reunion. I'm talking about it. Every week on your show, I get it. That, yeah, they are not necessarily feeling the same. I'm the clickbait. I'm the stupid clickbait. Maybe they should come speak on this. That's what I said. I mean, they should just come speak on it. <laughs> and let them give their opinion. We don't even edit anything. They can come right and sit right next to me and tell me, bitch, I don't like your ass, bitch. And we would let it play, okay? So it's not, do not discriminate. Right. And everybody's invited, okay? Right. So, um, yeah. All right, now I guess I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk Little Timmy Todd, but we like to call him over there. Okay, so so I got a question. 
you know, we're going to get right to it, man. We ain't beating the kids, nothing. They say, you know, you're going to leave Molly. Molly got to work in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I mean? Mama Joy said, you ain't going to do nothing. She, you know, you ain't going to leave the babies nothing. Right. She want to be a child. Trust. She going to trust you. You going to go off and marry some other lady. And she going to have to go to work. And she ain't going to be able to live. You know, what are your thoughts? Tied. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to it. And we decided we got to do different trucks. That you can hold it down. That should be on a separate trust. No children. So, what we just said, I think, um, Jamie said, who's in charge of the trust? No, no. We'll be in charge of the white trust, correct? That's what I said. So, so, you know, I'm going to have to trust, but if we're married, how is someone else in charge? So, I don't know. I'm not married. I don't know if it was the choice. I don't know which one it was. I think this was all at the same time. From our base, now what is the choice? The choice is all of them. It's a scenario that was if I was still living, right? It just hasn't yeah. happened to Ken. So we can be in charge of my shit. Uh, my wife uh, was? Uh, yes. Oh, so what if you're not placing two people? It's a scenario that something happened to Ken. We're dealing with the joint choice. Now see how the tide turns. He really pretty much how I took it that since he is alive. Why would we need Don Juan to be a part of something that's my shit that me and my wife got? See what I'm saying? That's what I am talking about. How Paul uh, says one thing and then when somebody come back and make him understand what was being said, he jumps shit. But see, right now, he's uh, upset in his mind about Candy having Don Juan and then the, the ideal of having Mama Joyce. On there telling him what to do. He ain't with that shit. He ain't with them shits. But hold on. Let's call her back. We need to clarify. Let's clarify. I didn't even mention the joint trust that has to do with me. Yeah. Which she should have said naturally, right? Oh. No, no. Now he's saying naturally candy should have thought that through that he would be control of his own stuff but now don juan is coming in you're gonna see todd switch up a little bit like he's not as angry and the shit was still being said that don juan would be a part of it period but a few minutes ago he just said this is like me telling my homeboy joe or somebody and my cousin coming over him trying to regulate stuff but he doesn't say that when don juan comes in the room Hold on. In the conversation, as if something happens again, in Georgia, what would they say? So they talked about which a joint trust, like you have, you may have a trust, you may have a trust with assets, then you guys have a trust with assets. And who was in Georgia? They were saying is that Candy, Candy said that you guys had talked about me, is what she said. And then that's when her mom said, What well, should be her and me? No, I had never seen I had never seen it. He, 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 didn't, he didn't know about it. Right. He was in the dark. Basically. But even thinking about it, sure. it means me and her, right? So if something happens to her, I'm still here. Yeah, right. So I think it'll be me and Don Juan. See, you see that? You see what I'm talking about? But initially, he said it just should be me. You know, where, where, yeah, it was just a whole mess. And I was like, oh, you see, that's the problem. You don't stand in your shit. If you didn't like the fact that Candy had put Don Juan over it, and then the thought of you hearing one day that Mama Joyce is a part of it, 
you should have went off. You know what I'm saying? You should have called cancer. I don't need that one up in here. I need my wife in here. Call her back because I ain't liking this situation. Then y'all got me on taping on the speak on it. And I'm trying to tell my truth. Yeah, get my wife back in here. Don't want to got to come in here. Okay, but let's go back. Everybody throwing candy up under the bus. Like everybody throwing candy up under the bus. Especially when it comes to Mama Joyce being in any of this control or have a say so or whatever the case may be. Todd is not liking that. Okay. He wasn't really liking the fact that Don Juan was a part of it, but he had to walk it back and say, Yeah, I trust, you know, Don Juan and it's supposed to be just between me and Don Juan. So why am I? No, Todd, the question is, if you was all up in arms, why does Don Juan, you have to play a factor in it? Why? Since you're saying the joint trust is between you and Candy. Candy's the spouse that died, so all control, then you Don Juan said it. All control goes to you and you decide because you're the sole living spouse out of the, you know, the marriage. But like I said, they got this shit together. They be, ugh, they be saying some shit. And it don't even make sense. And they be making fools out of themselves. But, I mean, that's where we live. That's where we at. But, Candy, just let your lawyers handle it. Get in writing with Todd being present. Mama Joyce, too. Because it seems like them other two people that's going to give you hell. And, and, and work it out between the lawyer. And just let a non-biased person, an attorney, come in and read your will, your last will and testaments, and who gets what. And that's, that's, you know, that's it. You know what I'm saying? They don't like it. At least they know what's coming. What, who got what and why and when and where. There ain't going to be no hard feelings once uh, breath rolls out of your body. The same thing should be done with Todd's uh, trust or whatnot. Uh, Kayla is his biological child. And then he still got baby, baby Ace and baby Blaze. I mean, baby Ace and baby, yeah, Blaze. And what he would do with Riley, I do not know. I don't even really care to talk about it, per se. You know what I'm saying? If you're a stand-up guy, like it seems like he is, he will make sure everything is cool and kosher with Riley. But I promise you, he ain't going to sit up there and, and, and raise, continue, well, he can't really raise her because she's 20, uh, will continue to give her uh, advice, I should say. But Riley ain't going to listen to it. But anyway, let's go back. Again, when Mama Sharon was a part of this world, this reality we lived in, her and Mama Joyce were going at it left and right. And when your mama said something that was disrespectful to Candace Bond, you just let it happen. You just laughed it off like, you know, that's one for us, Mama. And then Candy and, and Mama Joyce will be, you know, trying to bring the heat back at y'all. 
So it is, I see some, some bad attributes and characteristics in Todd when it comes to um, Mama Joyce. But it's like, you knew this before you told Candy you wanted to marry her. Mama Joyce has stand firm. She ain't wavering not one time. She don't like you, Todd. <laughs> and I don't care how many grandchildren you work with Candy to give her. She don't like you, Todd. So, yes, yeah, she is going to be your Achilles heel. She's going to be your nemesis as long as you stay on this earth. Because to me, it's more so she don't like you from the get-go because you're taking money out of her pocket. She don't care if Candy had boyfriends or just doesn't third, but once she started talking about marriage, Mama Joyce radar ears just go up and her brain gets to spin it because she didn't like the other guy that, oh, uh, I think he um got beat up or something. Oh, uh, I forgot his name, but she was supposed to got married to him and he had so many kids and Mama Joyce didn't like the fact that he had so many kids and that Candy, you know, in her notoriety, she would have to pretty much pay for them kids that she didn't even have. So, um, I don't know what situation would make Mama Joyce feel good about Candy marrying a person. I, mean, I think if I think he did say when they first had got together, um, that she wanted Candy to marry somebody in her uh pay her pay bracket. And Candy was like, sometimes, you know, that's not a doable thing. And sometimes she has tried to, but she ended up not liking them. They were a little bit more bossier, a little bit more stuck on themselves and all of that. And she didn't like it. So, in a sense, I guess Candy fell for just love and companionship. And that's what pushed her. She knew he, he had a good living. Is it more of a living like hers? No. Uh, even Todd said so himself. Uh, their money is different money. She got more money than him. And, uh, you know, he, he goes into this scenario talking about, you know, I want to make sure we good, we good now. But at one time before, uh, early on in the season, you were saying, well, you have all this, you have all that. But once you want to do something for yourself. So it's like, Todd, either you're going to play the role where you're behind the scenes. And you don't get any notoriety. All of it goes to Candy. And then Candy probably cut you a check or deposit some money in your bank account because you did make the situation happen. But like you said, she's the brand. You are not. So it's just a sly comments that he makes here and there that shows me or tells me that he is kind of disturbed. He don't want to be in the background. He wants to be the person that's making the money, that's doing the thing out there, and he can feel comfortable about the skin he's in. He's not comfortable with Candy making more money than him. He's not comfortable with Candy getting all the uh, accolades, all the, uh, what do you call it, attention. But I'm like, bruh, you knew this before. You want to get down on one knee and say, will you marry me? Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Okay. It just is what it is. Candace is a very shrewd businesswoman. And it uh, it wouldn't have been a wedding if you didn't sign that prenup. But she wasn't going out like that. She don't work too long, too damn hard to just give money away. And she's not even happy. Don't have no children from you and just that part. But we see y'all have been 10 plus years married. And, you know, y'all had two beautiful children. Um, and uh, you still have one baby girl out of wedlock. And you have an adopted baby girl which is Taylor. So, technically, y'all have five children. Y'all don't need no more. Two of the children are grown, but not grown enough where they don't need some handouts uh, here and there. Uh, and the other two, they, you know, they gonna make their money. I don't think neither one of them sure you got, even the five of them, gonna be in investing or having any concern about running or taking over the reins of the restaurants that you do have. My deal is y'all better make sure y'all make a hell of a lot of money and sell it off. Because them kids, they on their own. They feel like they they know what they want to do and they ain't got nothing to do with no restaurant. Especially the baby Ace, he's already trying to be out there in the industry, in the acting field. So how does acting correlate with going running a restaurant? <laughs> so I'm like, honey, baby, please, unless Melvin, your cousin wants to take over one. We don't even trust Patrick. Mm -mm. Patrick too crazy. Son. He got the 
the book says, but he don't even like to work really when he's in, you know being seen on all uh, the old lady game. He wanna do what he wanna do when he wanna do it. But it just is what it is. But let's continue this uh audio that we have and then we'll conclude this video. Because he says a lot more children. He says a lot more. Yeah. And I wish Don want to stop putting his foot in his mouth. Just stand in your shit. Yeah, Candy Corp wanted to use that. Just a little bit. That anything else. The mama thing, you know, mama his recognition too. He's crying out. If you really listen to him talk sometimes and you watch his body language and his facial expressions, he wants to be more known. 
but he knows after several attempts, ain't nobody checking for him. They're checking for Candy. So, yes, she's your wife. When she has money, you have money. Okay? And she can understand, uh, if nobody else understands, who played the uh, position to get her where she needs to be. You know, how she needs to word her contract. And like he was saying, she was leaving money on the table. And he taught her how to pick up all those pieces and get all of that money off the table by doing X, Y, Z. So, yes, uh, he plays a very pivotal part when it comes to negotiation, I guess, and showing her how to do production in the back part, which is something he has a lot of experience in. But like I've always said, I would love to have seen what Todd can do on his own and uh, produce on his own and see how far he can get. But evidently, just by listening, just by looking, just by observing, uh, his temperament, it seems like he already has tried to do this. He's tried to do solo dolo on a project, and it was probably not getting any traction because he would be seen as Candy's husband. Uh, Candy is the bigger picture. Everybody knows Candy. Um, they know where she started from and where she's probably trying to go. So he has to push his ideas through Candy. She has to be the brand for both of them, for both of them to win. Because they're not checking for Todd Tucker. You know, because they're saying, okay, who are you? Other than Candy's husband. What accolades have you gotten that we can pretty much verify or vet to see if you actually did these things? And with him being on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, you would think a lot of people... I guess what want to partner with him because he has a lot of experience being in the business. So you can't take that away from Todd or deduce his role. But everybody's going to see Candy because he put her in a position where he has taught her how to do certain things. And he encouraged her to do certain things. And um, hopefully he's encouraging. Well, you know, it's, it's a lot. I'm telling y'all, Bravo must be paying him some money. Because ain't nobody going to stay a, a part of a show and want to come back to a show that ain't paying them well. That's just it. I know for one, Kenya ain't going to be coming up here with no peanuts. And she could be doing something else. So definitely, the revenue stream of money that Bravo filters to them by them being on the show opens up many other doors that they can try to break into because they have the revenue to do so. Okay? So, uh, I don't know. I... I See, it's been 10 plus years, so how can you tell somebody to act differently when they've been doing this uh, song and dance throughout their whole marriage? Do you really think Candy is going to relinquish and uh, take her mother, I mean, her husband over her mother? Y'all are so, if anybody believes that, y'all are going to be sorely disappointed because, you know, Candy really knows knows about how guys get down, how relationships can end up, and the woman would be looking stupid at the end. You know, we've had several people go through these things, especially one in particular, Mary J. Blige. She thought she had a good, solid partner. He, he was, he, her husband was her manager, and all this stuff. And look what happened to them. She ended up having hot to pay. And hers is not the only one. This is the only one that popped in my head. I can give y'all an example of. Let's go on and conclude the audio so we can close out this video. Like, I, don't, I really don't care. Like, dude, we look good. Like, you know, we look good. Our kids are good. Our kids are happy. And so, so we, I'm like, it's right. And I say, once it becomes a thing of where I want it to be all about me, it's me, it's me, it's me. That's what she. You see what I'm saying? So he had to bump his head several different times to understand there ain't nobody checking for him. Ain't nobody checking for him. But as long as he can show his wife 
how to get to that bag. And he's there with her, giving her instructions because he's seeing everything by being in the background. He's seeing what's coming at her and what way they're trying to deal her. And he could be like, nah, baby, you need to do this because I heard this, that, and the third. And that's a partnership. You know what I'm saying? They get why the getting's good. But it's just the ugly side of it when things are not going so well in the relationship. And you start having to have to think methodically of, okay, if this goes south with our marriage, how much is he going to take from me? Because she kind of knows how vital he was to getting her out and about within the community, you know, investing in OLG, having two locations. And then you got Blaze Steak and uh, Seafood. You know, that was another venture. And she got a cosmetics line. And see, he probably introduced her to all of those different ideas, but it had to be her to go and enact on it before we could bring it into fruition. You see what I'm saying? I know y'all get where I'm going, for, going with this. But let's finish this. Yes. Yes, he did.
Well, we really, we don't want to hear about that, basically, because um, we had talked about it on another uh, video where Kayla spoke her mind, and she was pretty much trying to throw Riley under the bus uh, because she didn't grow up in need, you know what I'm saying? And then Kayla tried to make, like, Todd had money, you know, almost matching candies, and they were good. They were living in penthouses and just that and third. And uh, Kayla really should have shut her mouth and just said, well, no. My stepmom is a very good uh, influencer, motivator, and I, I love her to death. And she should have said, you know, uh, I, I, me and my stepsister Riley, we're trying to build a relationship. It's not quite there, but I'm sure with me and her still working on it, we can get things done. See, she didn't say that. She didn't say, um, uh, pretty much she just said Riley was spoiled, and she's going to be worth shit uh, when it's time. When shit hit the fan, she ain't going to be worth doing nothing. But she called me though and I, I'm I'm there for her. I'm like, oh girl, please, 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 please. But that just is what it is. And that's all I have for this video guys. Sorry it was a, a little lengthy, but you know, we had to cover a lot of things. I had to let y'all listen to audio that y'all may not have heard of at the time and y'all needed to be tap y'all needed some clarification of where I was going with some stuff. But that's all I got. I ain't got no more and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye bye.